My brothers and sisters in Christ, today's readings offer a beautiful illustration of the reality that in our Catholic faith we sometimes talk or refer to as living in the already but not yet. It is the sense that God is already doing something great in us and yet the best is still yet to come. And so in the first reading when we hear from, the, uh, from this uh, third, what we call Trito Isaiah, the, the third part of the book of Isaiah, speaks very much to the future, a lot of times to the end times. And he's speaking of the new creation. You know, I will create a new heavens and a new earth. I will create everything anew. No longer will be there be this weeping, this sadness, but all will be right. And so we, of course, can link this to, to what we hear, for example, in the book of Revelation, the heavenly Jerusalem coming down, the new heavens and new earth. And so this speaks to the reality, the final fulfillment at the end of time, in which God will create. It won't just be when, he, when we die, our souls are separated from our bodies. Uh, our bodies die and decay, and yet the soul is separated. And yet, at the end of time, there will be the resurrection of the body the glorious body which the soul will be reunited with. And this is the new creation that God speaks of. And so we look forward to that as the new creation, and yet we can speak of the new creation even now. And that is in the order of mercy. The mercy of God and the paschal mystery of Jesus Christ, who has suffered and died and, been, and risen from the dead for us, his mercy, his life, the life-giving spirit is given to us in our baptism, our confirmation, renewed every time we avail ourselves of the sacrament of penance. And so the mercy of God renews us and it already is remaking us. All that has fallen in us due to sin is reborn. Now, we live in the already but not yet. In a sense, we realize that this is a work in progress not only because we still commit sin, but because we realize that we still struggle with some of the consequences. Our concupiscence, that word we use to refer to the fact that our faculties are marred by original sin, you know, our intellect is darkened, our, our will you know, strains against itself. As St. Paul would say, I, I do the things that I don't want to do, and I do them anyways. So we, we can look that the consequences are still with us, including death itself as a consequence of sin. And so our bodies are finite, they're fragile, they're broken. Um, bad things still happen. It's not that the, the paschal mystery of the Lord has instantly made all evil cease. And yet, even now, the mercy of God is at work in renewing us. It's renewing the world. The Holy Spirit has come to set the world on fire to recreate. The recreation begins with us to break up our stony hearts, to make new hearts, living hearts for the Lord. And in the fullness of time, the recreation will be complete. It will be the new heavens and the new earth. And yet, God begins the recreation not with earth, ground, mountains, rivers, but begins with our hearts, with our souls. That is what is most precious to the Lord, and his mercy is offered to us in the here and now, in anticipation of that great and final end. But he says, you don't have to wait for that. My grace is for you right now. My brothers and sisters, in this Lenten season, may we say yes to the Lord and be recreated in his glory. May God bless you.